my darlings, welcome to a new vlog. Very brief health update. I would say I'm probably about 7 out of 10 now. Um, can't quite remember what normal feels like at this stage because it's been so long. Um, as you can hear, still a little bit stuffy. Um, my main complaint would be low energy. My energy levels have not sprung back. I've not done any, aside from a little walk at the weekend, exercise in like three weeks now. Um, and my other main complaint would be that my ribs are so sore from coughing so much. It's like I've got internal bruising from all the coughing. So we're getting there, um, but still not 100%. Just thought I would give that very brief update at the beginning in case you wonder why I'm a little flat, a little flatter than usual. Um, but I'm very hopeful that this will be the last vlog that I have to even mention the dreaded flu, because surely it can't last that much longer, and the recovery can't be that much longer. I'm on day four of antibiotics, so hopefully by day seven it'll all be obliterated. But anyway, onwards and upwards definitely feeling the best I've felt in like three weeks, so that's good. Um, had my usual croissant. I do find like when you get poorly, you develop new habits. I feel like I've got out of the habit of having coffee by itself. I made a coffee which is currently in the fridge, it's going to go in a smoothie shortly, um, <clears throat> and I've got into the habit of having a lovely fresh croissant in the mornings which is just something that I look forward to <laughs> every single day. So that's great. Um, I'm really amping up my skincare routine because I hadn't cared for my skin for the three weeks, two and a half weeks that I was ill, so um, going in with the big guns <laughs> skincare wise. And also, shockingly for me, haven't been to Dalesford now in three weeks. <laughs> it was, yeah, it's been a very long time, so I've seen from their Instagram stories, they've got their lovely spring install, it's looking gorgeous there, so I think Charlie and I are going to head there shortly to get out of the house, to get some lunch, um, and also I just, I miss it, <laughs> I miss going there, so that is the plan for this morning. Um, what did I have to update you on? Not much, I don't think, well, <laughs> no, not much at all. Um, we watched, well, Charlie watched the end of Unforgotten last night, which is a series that we both absolutely love. If you like kind of crime, sounds a bit weird, but if you like murder things on TV, um, if you liked Happy Valley, if you like Line of Duty, it's that kind of vibe. We're loving Unforgotten. Um, but it was one of those nights, obviously we said goodbye to George and Petra, they stayed with us over the weekend, and I just could not stay awake. We must have watched it from like 8 till 9 p.m and I could not stay awake for more than three minutes at a time and I didn't want to annoy Charlie, I didn't want him to not be able to watch it so he was like, oh, you're awake, you're awake and i just make some like positive noises but I slept through the whole thing so I really want to watch the end of that um, <laughs> today, maybe while I'm having my lunch and I really need to get back out into the greenhouse March is the big month when it comes to growing things I don't know why my broad beans have just not done anything, so I think I need to start again with my broad beans, my aubergines have come up, my nasturtiums have come up, surprisingly, because I was very bad at watering them while I was poorly. Um, the sweet peas are looking amazing, but I think we are due some very cold weather this week, so I'm definitely not going to plant anything outside. So everything's just going to stay in the greenhouse, and I might even take a heater into the greenhouse. Let's see, I think it said that we are going to get minus three tonight. Oh, that is a miserable forecast. Minus three tomorrow, minus three Wednesday, 60% rain. That is a very miserable weather forecast. <laughs> Can't help but feel that if I was to get a few days of sunshine, I would instantly feel healthier, but never mind. Never mind. I have a lovely new, um, gilet to share with you from Holland Cooper, which I'm going to wear today. I've got a very chunky Holland Cooper knit on. Should I also fold this collar inwards? I always find they look better folded inwards. Let's see. Yeah, 
just looks so much smoother here and if you do get a little bit of makeup on it when you're putting your knitwear on this hides it so that's a really good tip it's just got the nice button detail this is actually their um, cream knit from last year and they're a lot longer they come down to like a thigh height as opposed to hip height which I personally find more flattering and it keeps me a lot warmer so I hope they'll bring back the longer ones again next year because this year they're all a little bit shorter still lovely I just prefer a longer knit anyway I apologize for mess you can probably see around me when you're feeling poorly the last thing you want to do is tidy oh, this is embarrassing tidy a room so it's just got so messy <laughs> Let's just pretend that that's not there. This is the new gilet. I need to cut the tags off. It's very barber-esque in that it's got this corduroy detail on the collar. Um, I love that it's a gilet. <laughs> For obvious reasons, Charlie and I are number one gilet fans. You've got the lovely little Holland Cooper crest on the back there. It's not a wax jacket. It's not like a wax material, but it is the kind of material that if you get muddy dog paws up on you, you can just wipe it down super easily. This is my first time trying it on. Um, their current outerwear collection is really fantastic. Oh my god, I love it already. Sorry if you can see my really dorky socks, by the way. Um, yes, this is gorgeous. Oh, that is so lovely. I just know that I'm going to get so much wear out of this. So you can cinch it in a little bit. I'm so sorry about that. Great thing about having a rolly poof is you can roll it out of the way. So we can just cinch in and create a little bit of a nice waist detail. There we go. So if you're going to wear it open, that gives you a little bit more of a kind of flattering shape. Um, you've got the zips up here, I guess if you are going for a proper walk and you need a little bit more movement then you can open up the zips, but I think it's always a little bit warmer if you keep them closed. Um, oh, you've got an internal chunky zippy pocket, lovely, and you've got perfect, you've got the pockets you can access from the side down here and from above there. Really, really lovely. They've thought of a lot of very practical design details with this. So as well as this, I've got another long line coat, which I'll try on later. And then the countryside kind of field jacket style coat that I wore on the dog walk that you'll have seen in the last vlog, which again, I think they're all just gonna be super well-worn pieces if I get a lot of wear out of. Um, in fact, I'm gonna try on the other one now because I feel like it's so cold this may not quite <laughs> be warm enough for a trip to Dalesford. So this is the other one and it's again just like a big practical heading out on a dog walk just want to be warm and cozy but it's also not too thick it's not too bulky um, it's not like a duvet style coat and I love that everything comes in this like earthy green shade Okay, so this is a lot more of a long line kind of coat. You've got the very practical kind of internal glove detail, which keeps your hands so, <laughs> so warm. Ooh, lovely. Another just majorly practical, practical for living in the countryside dog walking, gardening on a really cold day, like if it's really chilly, um, but I think I'll get a lot of use out of this for dog walking. Huge pockets. You have actually got a little um, the pulley thing in here as well, so that is going to create just that little tuck around the waist, which is super flattering. They've really thought about practical internal pockets. Um, again, you have got little buttons down here which you could undo if you're going for quite a fast paced walk. But yeah, for today, just this is the kind of coat as well. If you're running errands, just gonna hop in the car, get some stuff done, then this is absolutely perfect. Another great 
countryside, very wearable piece. So I'm a huge fan of all the new bits that Holland Cooper have been bringing out lately. I will leave them all linked down below. I'm going to keep this on. It feels so snuggly but not bulky, like I don't feel restricted. Perfect. Okay, let's head to Dalesford. absolutely love these when we're feeling a little bit lazy. The curries and the mac and cheese, the sweet potato dal is also absolutely delicious. Good to have a few of these in the freezer. They've got these lovely new floral decorations since we were last here. Really pretty. And lots of new bits for Easter. Crikey. now 6 40 i have actually managed to catch up with quite a lot of work i had a lot of emails that i needed to tackle today that i had not got back to during my um i was gonna say time off but it doesn't feel like i've had time off my flu time um so yes very productive afternoon charlie has got his sports massage upstairs right now i should probably get started with dinner I tried as well to, while I was doing my emails, I tried to watch the last episode of Unforgotten again, but again, I just kept falling asleep, so I feel like it's not meant to be. <laughs> I'm not destined to know who the murderer was, but never mind. Um, anyway, as you can probably hear, I'm getting a bit tired and a little bit fluey again, so I'm going to bid you good night and catch up with you again when I'm feeling a little bit more fresh in the morning. Good morning my darlings, it is Tuesday morning. We woke up to a little flurry of snow this morning. Not exactly right here, but I can see it. I can see it on the hills in the distance and it's crazy. I really wanted to do some gardening later, but with the snow, I feel like it's just no point because everything will get cold and die. So I don't really know what to do gardening wise. Um, I made myself my first oat milk cappuccino of the entire year this morning. I managed to persuade myself over Christmas when I was doing all of that learning about what was good for me that oat milk was not good for me and I went down a bit of a wormhole. Um, obviously Oatly Barista will always have a place in my heart but it is full of rubbish ingredients. I have actually ordered a device which I should hopefully be able to make my own oat milk at home and I cannot wait for it to arrive. It's taking a very, very long time to arrive, but I think it'll be a bit of a game changer. But boy, oh boy, have I missed my morning oat milk cappuccino. Oh, it just brings me so much joy in the mornings. And I really missed it. Anyway, we're in here in the cold, wintry, very harsh lighting of our bathroom window because I would like to share with you an incredible new product which I have been using. You will probably recognize this from previous vlogs because I've been using it every single day. Honestly, this is why I still look like there is a soul in my body <laughs> after being ill because you know when you get ill, you do look like death. You feel like death and you look like death. And um, this has been bringing life to my complexion. This is the new Ultimune Eye Power Infusing Eye Concentrate with Immugeneration Red Technology. I had to read it from the label because that's a lot of very clever words from Shiseido. And the eye serum is um, 
a kind of follow-up slash protege of the Ultimune um, Power Infusing Concentrate from Shiseido. This here is Shiseido's number one serum. Shiseido is a brand that is just so well known. It's obviously Japanese skincare and it's known for products that have got so much research behind them. Oh, and the texture of this serum is just like the ever so slightly like 1% milky, silky, super lightweight serum. I find a little of that serum goes a very long way, so it's really easy to remember to take it down my neck because I often have enough left on my hands. So yes, this is Shiseido's number one serum for good reason. It's got so many anti-aging benefits in this. I'll leave this link down below. How this works is it's all about helping the skin to activate its defenses. So we are open to so many different environment <laughs> environmental aggressors all day every day even out here with the pure fresh countryside air there's still um well for me personally my environmental aggressors as well as obviously cold central heating um air con things like that but even like the fertilizers that the farmers use in the field there's still pollution in the air even out in the countryside but of course if you live in the city then pollution from vehicles there's even pollution in our homes from the kind of cleaning products that we use and also the sun um our diet all of these things can be very stressful for the skin this has got I think it's eight botanical ingredients, all of which are designed to help boost the skin's immunity so the skin can help to repair itself. And the clinical results that um, Shiseido have seen from this are absolutely incredible. Firming, lifting, brightening the complexion. There are so many reasons why this is a number one best-selling serum. However, the product that has truly blown me away and the new launch is the new eye serum. Now, I have said many a time in the past that I typically don't get along that well with eye creams. For me, an eye cream can be just that little bit too heavy, but for some people they really work. This, I would say, will work for everybody because a serum in its nature is a lot lighter in consistency. So let me show you, um, hopefully the camera will focus here. Probably not, let's see. It's a very, again, very light, milky, serum as opposed to a heavy cream i like to take it underneath my eyes but also over my eyelids because i'm really noticing when i'm speaking to people who are a little bit older than i am that they're really they're really thinking about their eyelids and how even um someone i was talking to wanted to get an eyelid surgery because they'd never used an eye cream before or an eye serum so now i'm really conscious of putting something very lightweight on the eyelids up to the brow bone as well. Just a nice little massage. So it's no surprise that the eye area is the biggest area of concern for, I think it's like 90% of women, so the eye area is the biggest area of concern. It's where we show expression. It's, you know, a very, it's a very important part of our face. It's actually the first place in our face to lose moisture, show signs of aging, show signs of tiredness. So it's really important to look after the eye area. Shiseido is very much a brand back in research all of their products are research led and they did something called life blood research and they found that the actual circulation of the blood under our skin is what can really affect how the skin looks and the aging process the skin around the eyes is very very thin so if you do get um, any so you really want to boost the circulation of what's going on underneath the skin in the eye area in particular. One of the botanical ingredients in this is a Japanese leaf called a heart leaf. And that is, according to Shiseido's research, fantastic at helping the vital flow of the blood circulation under the skin and particularly around the eye area. This little bad boy here is basically a super concentrated version of all of the benefits that you get in this because that is what our eye what our eye area needs without being a heavy cream which can really weigh down the eye area and create the illusion of puffiness. This has the exact opposite effect. Because there are over 20 years of research that have gone into the ingredients that Shiseido use, there are so many like clinical, incredible claims for this product. But one of the key ingredients which I was really impressed by, um, it 
by applying it to your eyelids it actually helps to nourish your eyelashes so you get the benefit of lash health as well which again I think just has quite a visual impact on how, how the eye area looks so overall just super anti-aging um, helps boost the circulation of the blood underneath your skin which I never hear any other companies talking about but it makes so much sense the reason we get dark circles is because the skin around our eye is thin and you can see when there is a bit of an accumulation of, of, of blood it sounds a bit weird but that's why it's so important and yeah I've never heard of an eye cream that also helps to condition at the lashes either so this little golden gem has been such a favorite of mine lately um, it is super lightweight I apply it morning and evening and you can if you do have an eye cream that you absolutely love you can apply that afterwards the only thing that I'm popping on my skin afterwards is a moisturizer this is the Shiseido Vital Perfection Uplifting and Firming Creme. And it's just the most heavenly consistency. It's perfect for this time of year because you still get the, the richness and the comfort that you want from a moisturiser when it's cold um, and <laughs> miserable outside. And yet it's not like a mega heavy sitting on your skin for a long time kind of moisturiser. I find this is the perfect base for a lovely, healthy makeup look. My skin just feels prepped and primed and ready for makeup after applying that. So this really is the ultimate duo that I have been loving using lately. Um, I will leave both of these products linked down below if you're looking to really add some luxury skincare into your routine that has got so many clinically proven benefits, then highly recommend these. Um, yeah, I'll leave them linked in the description box down below. Now I do like to let this moisturizer sink in for a good five minutes. I don't know what it is. I just like to feel that my skin is absorbing all the goodness. So I am going to, actually I'm gonna go and warm up my coffee because it's now got a little bit cold, put another washing load on. I don't know what it is these past couple of days. I have been, this is gonna sound so nerdy. I've been really enjoying doing washing. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't wash any clothes or anything while I was poorly, um, and now we've had George and Petra stay at the weekend, so I'm just loving the mundaneness, but also feeling productive of washing my clothing and washing bed linen and washing towels. It's just one of those house chores that I love. There we go. I said it. Now you must think I'm an absolute dork. Yes, I am, but yeah, it just makes me feel makes me feel productive, and. I am using that M&S combination of the sandalwood and, what is it, sandalwood and something, tonka? I don't know, but my washing is smelling amazing because of that combination. So there we go, the, um, the household chore update that nobody asked for. There we go. My camera lens is still um, covered in soil from that time that you face planted into my seedlings a couple of weeks ago. I still have not really cleaned it, but for the next 18 minutes, I am going to have a speed tidy of all of this. This is, you know when you're just not in the mind frame of tidying or putting something away, you create piles. I have created piles of clothes, of beauty products, of random things, there's even a pile of ski wear and I have not been skiing in years um, and yet there's a pile of ski wear over there so I just need to do a little bit of tidying, reason for the precise amount of time now probably 17 minutes, is that um, my towels are just about to finish in the washing machine, so I thought I would do like a speed blast. Sometimes I feel that if you put a time limit on your tidying, it makes it seem a lot more achievable, and you actually get a lot more done. But even when I've put the towels in the tumble dryer, I'm going to come up and do like a, a deeper tidy and cleanse I think because I've not had the energy to tidy or sort <coughs> in the last few weeks I just feel that there's a lot that can be done I would also really love to style this area um, it's in the background of most of my videos and yet I don't really do anything with that area um, so if you've got any ideas I might I might even go on Pinterest and look at some shelf styling but it needs to be practical. I'm not gonna just put old books and plant pots up there just because it would look beautiful, even though it would do, because this is a functional space, so I need it to perform it for me. Um, anyway, I'm gonna get started with this area down here. I've got PR mail that 
we've unboxed and just brought upstairs and I've just thrown it there. Piles of clean clothes that need to get put away. The random pile of ski wear. I'll tell you why there's ski wear there. The suitcase, my medium sized antler suitcase, is probably my most useful size suitcase. It's not the huge one. The huge one is great for if I'm going away for like a week or so. I can't pack light. <laughs> it's not a talent that I possess. Um, but the medium one is really good for one or two or three night stays. And I do actually have, um, I'm staying overnight in London on Thursday, so in a couple of nights. And then I've got a very short European trip the following week? Yeah, the following week. So that'll probably be my suitcase for those trips. Also, very excitingly, just confirmed my first like proper long haul press trip since before. Well, no, actually, we did do Palm Beach and um, Orlando, so not my first long haul press trip since Covid, but my first beauty press trip that's long haul <laughs> since before Covid. And I felt like I'd almost got out of um, the swing of really loving these long haul press trips because that sounds awfully ungrateful. Um, but I think I just love being at home so much. But when this opportunity came up, I was like, wow, that is somewhere that I would not normally choose to go on a holiday. And I just love exploring and I feel like I've been cooped up for a long time. So yes, that's happening very soon at the end of this month. So I look forward to sharing that more with you. Anyway, I've been rambling for three minutes, which has massively reduced my tidying time. So without further ado, I'm going to blitz this area. Let's do it. I could actually hear the Samsung song which for some reason shows up on my um, TikTok for you page. People dancing to the Samsung end of cycle song. Very tragic, but I could hear it from my dressing room. So a little pause in the tidying while I sort this out. Why am I so obsessed with doing washing at the moment? Someone explain it to me. <laughs> it's a very weird obsession. my current um, two different processes that I use. When we do delicate items like silks or cashmeres, I find that the tablets, these ones here, which are actually um, matching this, which is, this is the viral combination on TikTok that makes your clothing smell like Le Labo. It is M&S's um, sandalwood and rose. So I use the fabric conditioner from this range and the tablets. I would like to find the laundry liquid version of this fragrance but it's always sold out and this is still a really good combination. Got a new one from Ocado. Um, so that's my like towels and bed linen combo. Smells amazing. But then because I don't find that these melt down properly sometimes I'll get like a sock out and it'll have <laughs> some like squidgy tablet left on it. I won't put a tablet in if we're doing delicates or wool or cashmeres and instead, luckily, our washing machine, which we've had since we moved in, it's been a really great washing machine, has got these two little drawers so you can put um, softener in here, you can put the t detergent in here and it's not just for that wash, that will, if you top that up, it'll last like three weeks worth of washes and because this is a liquid detergent, um, Obviously you don't need to worry about a tablet not dissolving, so this is the lavender and geranium and it smells absolutely gorgeous. So there we go, that is my current <laughs> laundry routine. See it took like a third of the bottle in the drawer, so you can just imagine that it saves you so much time having to do it in your individual washers. <laughs> Thank you. 
tidying and done starting to feel productive in here sorry the reflective surface on my dressing table is creating some crazy lighting but I have two things that I would like to open and share with you one of which is a new hair device this um, has come from a, a brand that I've never heard of before it's called Keo it's their Genius Smart Glide Straightener, the world's kindest hair straightener. And having quickly read the press release, I believe that um, one of the main points of difference with this is that it doesn't clamp down on the hair as much as a regular hair straightener. Ooh, jazzy, wow. Looks like a really luxe version of the GHD Platinum Styler. Very sleek, actually. So yeah, basically, what, it's, what they've said is that the whole action of clamping down on the hair as you straighten it is what can be very damaging to the hair. And I can see instantly, okay, it's gonna be really tricky to get these out of the box, but can you see the shape of the plates has got a little bit of a squiggle to it, and that is meant to not clamp down on your hair quite so much, um, which apparently, is better for damage levels which is really interesting I mean, it's a beautiful product it's very sleek glossy it's very it feels like ghd quality um price point wise let's see 179 so i think that that is on par with like the leading products at the moment it says, what do you get when the group of inventors behind the biggest global success story within the hair appliance sector to date? I wonder what they're talking about. Are they the founders of GHD or like a Dyson hair product? Work on in innovating the category and tackling the biggest consumer concerns. I need to know who these founders are. I guess legally they can't say it in the press release. Okay, this is really peculiar. I cannot find anything about this brand online. I just typed in Keo hair device and nothing comes up. Has this launched yet? Okay, I can't find anything online either. On their website it just says designed in the UK by the brains behind the hair tool industry's biggest global success story to date. Keo Genius is manufactured in Korea at the forefront of 20th, 21st century beauty development. Kyo in Korean means care and kindness, perfect for a straightener that's kinder to the hair. So the founders and what this biggest hair tool that they invented remains a mystery, but feels like a really good quality product. I'm intrigued as to um, how this will perform with the slightly wiggly plates. Certainly unlike anything I've tried before, I know there are a lot of hair launches out at the moment. But um, yeah, I'll be intrigued to give this a try. I haven't used a straightener on my hair in quite some time. So when I do my hair tomorrow, I will give that a go. Certainly feels like a really nice quality product. So yeah, we shall see. It'd be nice if there is a new brand on the scene, bringing us something which is kinder to our hair. Next, <laughs> this is a bit ridiculous because this is a three and a half month delayed unboxing. This is gonna be the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever said, but I actually forgot about this Gucci purchase, which is totally ridiculous. This is the Gucci bag, which I got at Vista Village um, when I went with the girls before Christmas, and I put it in my wardrobe, and then I completely forgot about it, which is, oh, there's another of my lovely hair clips. These are like gold dust. When I bought them, I think I only, there was only three. I think there was only three of these in the set when I got them. I think I got them from the Anthropology in Nashville or Franklin. Um, and I absolutely love them, but I was down to the last one. I lost all but one, but now we have a second one, which is great. Anyway, yeah, I just hid in this in my wardrobe <laughs> for some reason and then completely forgotten about it and it is rather gorgeous look at this actually perfect timing because it's really lovely for spring really nice size will fit my vlogging camera i did a little test 
in the store fits the biggest iPhone. Um, yeah, it's a really lovely bag, so how stupid of me <laughs> to forget about this. The, the Gucci unboxing that wasn't meant to be. So there we go, <laughs> in case you ever wondered what I picked up from that Vista Village trip. I'll pop it in my handbag area. Now, it's only 11.46, but I'm very hungry. I don't think these butter croissants are keeping me full enough. Um, I need to go back to having my nice fruity protein smoothie in the mornings. But I was watching Tegan from Half Baked Harvest. She was, she, she lives, I think in Colorado. Um, but timing wise, when I wake up in the mornings, it's her dinner time from the day before because of the US to UK time difference. And she was making on her Instagram stories her tahini and peanut butter noodle dish. Mm. It just looked so delicious. I was literally lying in bed at seven o'clock this morning dreaming about that noodle dish. So I'm hoping I've got noodles. I think I do. Um, so I'm going to go and make myself that as a very early lunch. By the time I've cooked it, it'll be quarter past 12. So that's a fairly acceptable early lunch time. And then I think I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon just having, I don't want to say clear out, but just organising this room a little bit more. There's a lot of beauty products which have piled up, which I'd like to sort out, and I can actually no longer move in that cupboard there. That one. Because it's so crammed full of coats, I need to have a coat clear out. So that is my plan for the afternoon. Right, slight change of plan because I don't have any spring onions, which are quite crucial to the noodle recipe. Um, but fear not, I have got all the ingredients for my pea and pistachio, I'm going to call it like a pesto-y carbonara blend. And this is, I would say, 80% a pasta queen recipe. I think she calls it her lazy princess. Just gorgeous, you know that one. Um, and I love that recipe, but I love pistachios. So I add pistachios and a little bit of extra cheese to my version. This was another dish that I really craved while I wasn't feeling very well. I think I was just craving the goodness of a little bit of veg with the peas. You can stick other veg in here as well. Um, it's actually, do you know what? Pasta dishes are just a great way of getting vegetables in your diet when you're not really feeling like eating vegetables. I would recommend getting a roasting pan. It's putting loads of veggies in it with some um, garlic, even like tomatoes, whatever roasting it with some olive oil and then just blend that up and it makes the most delicious pasta sauce and you just feel like you're having a pasta dish which is always a winner. So this dish that I make is very very easy. I chopped an onion um, last week and if I don't use it all I'll always just pop the remaining chopped bits in a freezer bag. So I'm going to do a big handful of chopped onion with some good quality olive oil in a pan and get that all lovely and fragrant. I'm going to add in some frozen peas. Might actually lightly cook these. Um, normally I just stick them in a microwavable bowl with some water, and then I'll add those into my fried onion mix. Then I take most of that mixture and I blend it so it's really lovely and smooth. Sometimes you can add in some pasta water to make it even smoother. Pasta-wise, I'm using Orecchiette. Not my favourite, but in my top ten, <laughs> I would say. And I just like it when peas get stuck in the middle of the Orecchiette because some of the sauces you'll see remains um, not blended. And then towards the end of the cooking time, just making sure the sauce stays quite silky, using little bits, like a tablespoon at a time, of the pasta cooking water. Then I will blend up some parmesan or pecorino cheese with an egg. This is what makes it a little bit more carbonara-y. And add that in at the very end, just so that the egg doesn't cook, but you get that really lovely texture. So, first of all, oh, and then I sprinkle with pistachios at the end because that just adds a perfect element. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna use the Thermomix to chop up my cheese and then I will use the Thermomix to chop up my pistachios all while the kettle boils. I love this saga and I love this kettle but it is the slowest kettle in the entire world. It literally takes like 10 minutes to boil, if not longer. 
So I'll do all the food prep while that boils and then it's all stations go. I have mixed together my cheese, which is obviously finely grated, and an egg. Crushed pistachios and peas have gone lightly blitzed in the microwave. Obviously when I've got my kitchen garden in full bloom, I will use vegetables from the garden, but frozen peas are actually not a bad option. It's a really great way of getting um, a little bit of greenery <laughs> into your diet. And actually because they've been frozen so quickly after being picked, they're still very fresh and nutrient rich. So I'm not snobby about frozen peas. Okay, kettle has boiled, so saucepan. Fill that up. And then you want a really good pinch of salt in the water. my orecchiette. Okay, pasta is boiling over here. Now I'm gonna use my always pan for the sauce. So a really good helping of olive oil. Don't scrimp out on this. And I'll let that heat up a little bit and then we're gonna add my already sliced and chopped onion. Okay, so the good thing about doing it this way with the frozen onion is that you can really carefully decide exactly how much you want and the rest of it's just gonna go back in the freezer. It doesn't make any difference. If it's frozen, it'll just naturally defrost and cook as normal. It's gonna help it break apart a little bit. Okay, my onion is sizzling away. My pasta is probably only 50% cooked, but firstly, there's nothing worse than overcooked pasta, and I want it to finish cooking in the sauce. So, I'm going to drain my pasta, but I'm going to keep the cooking water, because that's really important for helping keep the sauce a little bit more smooth. Okay, I'm just gonna season my onion salt and a bit of pepper or a scrunch of pepper as the pasta queen would say and I'm adding in my peas which have had about 30 seconds in the microwave I'm gonna put this on a slightly higher heat just so that can boil up a bit Okay, so now this mixture is starting to boil. I'm going to put about four fifths of this in my Thermomix and blend it up to make a really lovely smooth sauce. I'm just leaving a tiny little bit, don't know if you can see, um, of peas and onion in there. Just adding a tiny bit of the pasta cooking water as well. And I'm going to blend this until it's perfectly smooth. Okay, that's going back on the heat. My blended mixture's going in. 
and here comes the pasta to finish off cooking in the mixture. Okay, it's five minutes later. The pasta has been cooking in the pea and pasta water mix for the last five minutes or so. I just gave it a quick taste and it doesn't need any more seasoning at the moment. Putting it on the lower temperature hob here so it's gonna stop boiling. because I'm gonna add my cheese and egg mix and we don't want scrambled egg. Make sure your pasta, by the way, is cooked before you add in your cheese and egg mixture. This is just gonna make it lovely and delicious and creamy. I would recommend tasting this at various stages as well, just to make sure you've got enough seasoning. You can see instantly this just makes the sauce the most gorgeous, like smooth consistency. Never looks quite as good as when the pasta queen makes it, but there we go. Gonna add in a handful of my pistachios so I can blend them through. Stir them through rather. Oh my gosh, this is looking amazing. Okay, final taste test. This is really just to see if it needs more pepper. Mm. Oh my god, this is the best one I've made yet. Mm. Good cheese to pea ratio. Okay, so this is how it's currently looking. I'm going to plate it up. Ooh, yummy. Okay, this is looking and smelling amazing. I'm adding a tiny bit of pepper. If I'd have remembered, I would have saved some Parmesan before adding the egg and I'd have added a little bit more on top, but alas, I forgot a little bit of blitzed up pistachio. I just love that little bit of crunch. And I'll put these in a jar. They won't go to waste. There we have my pea and pistachio pesto-y, carbonari, mouth-watering, delicious pasta lunch. Yay! crazy hot in here and crazy sunny which could lead to some fried plants which would not be ideal so yeah maybe I need to get those like pulley pulley blind things because this is what it's like on a semi-cloudy cold and fairly miserable March day so I've done a little bit of watering as you just saw it's always good to get out in the fresh air I find especially after a pasta dish and that was an exceptionally delicious pasta dish highly recommend that um i thought i would share with you sorry i'm really dazzled i have to <laughs> shield my eyes i'm gonna have to start bringing sunglasses in here i thought i would share with you the casualties from my time being ill uh obviously not being able to care for my little seedlings as much as i normally would the main casualty were the first micro herbs which i brought into the house and the soil is actually noisy, it's so dry, like you can hear it crunching. So there is absolutely no way that anything was gonna survive in here. I won't be wasting this soil, I will reuse it um, in like the bottom of larger plant pots. It's not gonna be a good growing medium anymore because the seeds will have taken so much energy and goodness from the soil. But what I will do is just tip these spent you call it spent soil into this bucket 
and then when I need some filler material I'll just grab that so tragically all three of my micro herbs that I kept in the kitchen window completely dried out however the weird thing is that micro herbs that have grown in here are still doing really well so these are ready to be harvested we've got the spinach here um the lettuce and then we've got the pea and the radish the rocket never do you know what it's only just starting to germinate that is crazy and then something else do you know what i think generally the greenhouse stuff just grows better since i bought these sweet peas in and look how well they're doing these have just really rocketed up these ones were much slower to germinate because they've been in here the whole time but these ones wowza they are doing so well in fact these two were starting to entwine with each other so i save these little sticks from flower bouquets and they make for really great little sweet pea supports and then very excitingly my first sign of life within my broad beans I sewed these over a month ago. They have been in here the whole time, so very cold. And warmth is what's really needed for germination as opposed to light. So I definitely could have germinated these quicker in the house, but I didn't want a load of loo rolls in the house. And they will most definitely catch up, so I'm not worried about those. Hopefully a few more start to germinate. And then we've got the bulbs, and it's really important to not forget to water your bulbs at this time of year. The crocuses have got a little bit dry, um, but I think this is tulips starting to come up, so that's exciting. Loads of tulips in here, gonna bring this up so I can get some more daylight now. And then another great success are these cute little mascari pots. These will look really nice when we next do an Easter or Mother's Day kind of dining tablescape. Um, got a few of those, and another tragedy. This was the plant tray that didn't have the plastic cover on it, so no, um, what do you call it, condensation to keep this soil going. And again, it's just gone completely rock hard and crispy. So tragically, this was a wasted activity. You can see the lettuce. I mean, lettuce cheap. Le lettuce seeds are very cheap and germinate very easily, so I'm not too sad about these, but. I don't know, maybe these peas could come back to life. It's just a really crispy, solid lump of compost. Not very fertile for growing. Can't actually remember when I sewed this tray. But we've got lettuce, coriander, leeks, uh, chives, and a few different flowers, which I'm gonna have to start again with. So I think what I might do is take my seed booklet inside. It's been at least two or three weeks since I thought about sowing any seeds, and March is the busiest month. So I definitely have a lot that I can catch up on. Okay, my darlings, I have just quickly gone to get changed because even I will not do seed sewing in an all white outfit. So I've got on my lovely Holland Cooper gilet and my N peel green um, knit that Charlie got me for Christmas. So a lot more suitable color wise. So what I'm gonna do is have a little look through my seed collection book, my lovely book with all of my precious seeds inside. Um, I need to replant the ones which I had to get rid of. I don't think there's anything ridiculously exciting in there. Um, I'm gonna make a plan. We actually don't have any plans this weekend, <laughs> which is quite unusual for us. Um, but I think that means a weekend of gardening, which is great. There are a few things here which I can actually plant outside now or after this week because of the cold temperatures that we do this week. So I think I'll plant some of the Autumn King carrots and I might direct sow some um, other greens as well, like the pak choy and the lettuce. But I'm going to start now just by going through that and also my little biscuitiers tin full of seed packets as well and I think what I'm going to do is replace the little seedlings that were in this so my little compartmentalized ones 
And then I'm also going to use one of these big seed trays and I'm going to try doing my lettuce in here because lettuce grows so quickly um, and I think it'll do better to grow in the greenhouse rather than inside where it's just getting too leggy. So I'm going to give that a go. I'm going to have a look through if I've got any rainbow chard seeds as well because rainbow chard is something that I love to grow and it's also really beautiful and the more you cut it back the more it grows again. So it's a very productive thing to grow. So I'm going to have a little flick through my seed books and start planning my March plantings. <laughs> and the sun is coming out. <laughs> Okay, so with my assistant's help, I have put together a few piles of seeds for various um, planting over the next couple of weeks. This selection here are bits which I think could actually be started off outside, probably after this week's cold spell, don't you think, Dickie? And I'll probably plant them under a cloche. I've got my Claverton cloches, so they should be fine to be put outside. So that's a mixture of carrots, turnips, and spring onions and these are all quite hardy don't mind a little bit of coolness outside so we shall see the great thing about seeds is that they're they're so affordable that you can afford to literally afford to experiment a little bit with your timings and planting i'm going to start a few herbs um probably not top priority today because i just don't find herbs that exciting but it is good to start growing some in march but the things that i'm going to do today I've got a pile here of different seeds which I'm going to do in this kind of seed tray. So we've got some beetroot, that's some Delsford seeds, some um, Monge 2 seeds left over from last year, cucumber seeds which by the looks of it I have tried them before but I don't remember ever having any luck with cucumber so we'll give it a go. The free tomato seeds that came um, free with Gardener's World magazine, a few more of the Dalesford tomato seeds, Dalesford aubergine seeds, um, a few of the early ambassador type pea. These would be great peas for the kind of lunch that I had today. Really nice, big, juicy, fresh peas. And then we have got the Oscar type. I'm not sure which one will come up first, but nice to have a few different varieties. And then a new batch of Monge too as well, because I use so much of these when cooking. So they are gonna go in that seed tray. Then in this seed tray, I'm not gonna do individual um, areas like this. I'm just going to do more of a scattered approach because this is going to be my lettuce tray. I've got a Gardener's World mixed salad, a winter lettuce, a red oak salad lettuce, and this one is called the Drunken Woman Lettuce. So I'm going to give all of those their own little space in this tray here. And hopefully if I leave them in the greenhouse, they won't get as leggy as the ones that I tried indoor. And then finally, I've got a little selection of flowers here. Nasturtiums are especially good as a companion plant to put in your raised bed so i've got a couple of those and then a few which unfortunately didn't make it last week um, in the last couple of weeks when i let the seed trays dry out so take two on a few of these flowers i remember having really good luck with these lupins last year and they are so exceptionally beautiful um, i've already seen a few start to come back this year and they should be in bloom during the time of our wedding so if I can fill the garden with these, I will be very, very happy indeed. So I'm gonna start off nice and easy, I think, with the lettuce tray.
gorgeous light coming through the greenhouse. I've done about 45 minutes of seed sowing. I'm not going to do too much more because I don't want to end up <coughs> I don't want to end up getting cold in here. So I think I'm just going to take this pile into the house, my seed book and my seed tray and organize organize my seeds. That is what I enjoy doing these days. I feel like I'm practically a retiree where my hobbies include seed organizing. Um, but I've already taken the two last seed trays that I planted up into the house so that they can germinate in the warmth. I just really hope it's gonna be okay in here tonight. Um, we are meant to get down to minus three. I wonder if I should clear this water because it might actually freeze tonight and that would not be good for my little seedlings. If anyone knows anything about lemon trees, do we think this is gonna come back to life? I think it is fairly unlikely, but I will care for it a little bit longer. Thought I would give you, just to, just to end the vlog, a little March garden update. The only real changes since the last time I saw you are the emergence of quite a few of the bulbs. I'm thinking these are probably um, alliums and tulips starting to come up. There's quite a few little yeah, bulbs <laughs> starting starting to come up. And then down here, the kitchen garden is looking primed and ready to go. Just need to wait for the ground to warm up a little bit, for the threat of frosts to be not quite so imminent. And then I will start to grow some bits in these cloches, but don't the beds just look ready to go? Something smells really nice down here. I think someone's cooking something delicious. The roses are starting to show some leaf. And I did notice just a few, don't know if you can see these little purpley stalks coming out here, a few of the peonies starting to come out. I think that might be another one over there. Hopefully we'll see a lot more because I would really love to see lots of peonies emerging in this area. We need to top up the water levels here in the stone trough because that is getting a bit low. What have we got here? Gosh, that actually looks like a weed. You know the ground is starting to warm up when weeds start to come through. So yeah, still very dormant, um, but it won't be too long. Ooh, poppies. It won't be too long, hopefully, and still until we start to see lots of signs of life down here. This is like the calm before the storm, when all gardeners are just itching <laughs> to get started and grow things, but it's just that tiny bit too cold still. No signs of life on the crab tree, crab apple arch. But anyway, it is starting to get chilly and I don't want to worsen my cold. So I'm gonna take my tissues and my seeds back into the house and do a little bit of organizing. And we are back in the worst lit windowsill in the entire world. I've escaped upstairs and I'm going to take off my makeup and give my skin a hit of moisture for the evening. I also needed to escape from the um, kitchen because ugh, not loving <laughs> the cooking smells in there at the moment. Charlie's cooking a very early dinner, but then I had a very early lunch so I won't complain. Oh my gosh, speaking of house chores, obviously <laughs> I've shared my love for um, doing the washing very boringly in today's vlog. I shrunk one of my wool dresses. Thank God it was one of my items and not one of Charlie's very expensive wool jumpers. But yeah, what was a gorgeous midi length wool white jumper dress is now about that big and feels like cardboard. So it's completely ruined, um, which is a real shame. I think I just got, just got a bit carried away, but never mind. Anyway, um, I feel that this vlog could be getting quite long and I'm going to start a new one tomorrow. So I'm going to wrap things up. I'm just going to have an early pamper removal of the makeup. I feel like I got out the habit of taking off my makeup um, at the end of the working day. I just feel that I spend so much more time doing my skincare routine when I give myself this time instead of doing it just before bed when I'm always so tired that I literally want to do it as quick as possible and not enjoy the process. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed today's vlog. I feel like we're getting back into the swing of things, slowly but surely. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the links in the description box down below. You can click the little more button to get direct links to discover the amazing skincare that I've been loving from Shiseido and everything else that I've mentioned in today's vlog. So darlings, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.